of Night. You know, you're going to feel a lot better once you get back to your own place. I know that Julia missed you. I missed you. I was hoping that maybe once we got back, we could sit down again and just talk. What is it? Uh, no nothing. No, uh, yes, yeah, something. Uh, something that bothers me. About the picture? Um, about something that happened last night at, at, at the Rexford. Um... I, I was I was very nervous trying to get out of there last night. I couldn't remember what Sharky had told me, whether to go right or left. I, I, I didn't know where the, the door to the stairs were, so I, so I just picked any door. why but there was something about seeing that bandaged woman that 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 was the greatest shock i had all night well it's a hospital where they do plastic surgery it's only natural you're going to find patients with bandages no on their faces. no it was more than that I... draper it was almost as if that woman was asking me for help well, she probably thought you were the nurse no no i didn't get that impression on something maybe it was in her eyes well, that was the only part of her face that you saw. Yeah. But I'll tell you something, Draper. The eyes of that woman, they looked so much like Nancy's. I still think we should be positive that Nancy never followed up on the information given to her by that waitress at the Silver Spoon. And that she never went to San Francisco. Yes! But we know that she did go to San Francisco. I told you that. They found her bracelet. She couldn't have been in two places at the same time. <sighs> Look, honey. It's, it's been a long day. You're tired. But we don't have to go back tonight. We'll stay here. Go back in the morning, all right? Together. I, I was so hopeful. I, I really wanted so much to change things. There are some things that we can change. Hey, Shark. Whoa, whoa, what is this, man? Come on, you're back early, huh? Oh, what's the matter? You strike out with Ginger tonight? Yeah? Hey, well, you know where the formaldehyde is? Yeah, sure. Good. Go soak your head in it. Whoa, you really must have had a bad night, huh? Come on, come on, tell me all about it. Why, you go to Sid's place? I'm trying to watch the TV. Right? Oh, excuse me, excuse me, important, huh? I know, the drive-in, right? The redhead, the little one with the boyfriend wrestler, huh? You made a move on her, he put you hey, down. Hey, look, will you get out of here? I'm not in the mood for any company now tonight, look, right? Now, look, Now, look, this ain't gonna be good for your reputation. I'm gonna have to tell June about it tomorrow night. What makes you think you're gonna go see June? Oh, man, I got more plans than just seeing June. Wait till I tell you hey, what look, I got in mind. You wanna know what I did tonight? Yeah, okay. You wanna know what I did tonight? I'll tell you what I did tonight. I had a little date with your friend June. Oh, uh, you're a liar, man. <laughs> okay, ask her. Go ahead, ask her. Ask her about uh, Willis Point. Oh, you took her to Willis Point. Huh? She begged me to take her there. What else could I do? I picked her up right after quitting time. No, no, she quit early. That's how eager she was. You're lying, Sharky. You never came near. I couldn't tell you. Ask her. Just ask her. I'll tell you one thing, though. You're going to look like a cold sack of potatoes to her after tonight. Yeah, you did try to make a move on June, didn't you, you stinking rat? It's not enough you got Ginger, man. You got to have every broad in this town. Well, look, someone's got to take care of them, Wally. I'm just trying to look out for my buddies, you know? Yeah? I'm warning you, pretty boy. Stay away. Huh? Get up! What are you doing, man? Stay away from her, huh? 
Yep. Huh? I won't break your neck! I'm sorry, Mrs. Bryson. It wasn't my fault. He started He's it. He's lying, Charlie. He's lying. Oh, both of you. What in God's name's going on here? They were fighting. What? He started it, Doc. I the, swear. He's the one who started it, Doc. That's Doc. enough. You're fired, both of you. I want you out of this hospital first thing tomorrow morning. Uh, wait a minute, Doc. Now, let's be real. If there's one thing I won't tolerate, it's this sort of behavior. Oh, come on, Doc. You don't mean that. Oh, I do mean it. Well, you can't fire us. Who, who's going to take care of the patients, Sam? We'll find replacements. And I can assure you that you won't be hoodlums like you. Wait a moment, Kenneth. Let's not be rash. It won't be easy to find replacements. Perhaps we should think it over. Uh, yeah, that's right, Dr. Bryson. Uh, I think you ought to sleep on it, don't you? Hey, Doc. Now, look, I swear I didn't have nothing to do with it. It was his fault. You know me, Wally. I don't cause trouble. My only problem was recommending this creep. Be quiet, Wally. And go back to your room. Yeah, okay. Only had nothing to do with it. Nothing! And you, clean up this room and start packing your things. I really think you're making a mistake, Dr. Bryson. I mean, I'm not a good man to lose right now. Don't you agree, Mrs. Bryson? He may have a point, Kenneth. We don't want to deplete the entire staff now, do we? I mean, you have to admit I'm uh, very valuable around here. Doc. You know what I mean? I see. Sharky must stay. We'll fire Wally. And this sort of thing will never happen again. Hey, what's the matter? I just have a very sick feeling that I'm responsible for Nancy's disappearance. Oh, baby. That's not reasonable. It doesn't make any sense. I know it doesn't. But that bandaged woman, her eyes draper, they look so much like Nancy's. This is uh, Clifford Nelson. Oh, howdy, partner. How you doing? I'm fine, Cliff. L look, I just wanted to let you know that I'm not coming in today. Are you sick? No, no, I'm not sick. Hey, look, if you're playing hooky, forget it, all right? I'm doing enough work as it is. Uh, no, no, Cliff, uh, it's April. She and I are together, a little place upstate. Really? Hey, that's fabulous. Look, take two days. T take a whole week. No, Relax, Cliff. We're not on a second honeymoon. Well, you are together, aren't you? <sighs> Cliff, I don't know what we are. Look, I'll, um, I'll let you know when I come in tomorrow. Thanks a lot. Yeah, sure, yeah. Have a good time. Whatever you're doing. The food should taste much better, Mrs. Carr, now that your senses are sharper. Of course, some people enjoy all those little barbiturates running around in their systems. Well, I don't. I'm relieved to be rid of them. We aim to please at the Rexford. Well, if you would really like to please me, you'd let me go. Be grateful for small favors. All I want to do is go home. Aren't you forgetting the agreement you made with my husband? Keep complaining and I will fill up a nice long syringe. Mrs. Bryson, I'm sure you have more interesting things to do than to stay here with me. The doctor told me the hospital is shorthanded. That is none of your business. Oh. Well, now, I think it is, because I don't want any less attention than I'm accustomed to getting. Don't worry. The situation will be taken care of. Oh, everything all right? The patient is doing just fine, Doctor. 
Well, anything I can do? I'm taking care of Mrs. Carr. Shouldn't you be seeing to Sharky? Yeah. Yes, I suppose I must. Mm. I'll drop in on you later, Mrs. Carr. Bandages, Mrs. Carr. Oh, please don't do that. There's got to be another alternative. Mrs. Carr, we have been through all this. Mrs. Bryson, isn't it enough that you've kept me hidden away here? I really don't care to discuss this. I just wish you could know how uncomfortable those bandages are. Well, now, I can arrange to give you an injection. That way you won't feel anything. You enjoy this, don't you? Mrs. Carr, I wish I had never laid eyes on you. Mrs. Bryson, the feeling is mutual. I am simply making the best of a very bad situation. As soon as we have someone able to stay with you, the bandages won't be necessary. Oh, I'm so lucky. And Mrs. Carr, I have other things to do, so please be quiet and let me get this taken care of. This is a hospital, Sharky. Not one of your cheap beer halls. Thanks for reminding me. The next time you decide to engage in common street brawling, find yourself more appropriate surroundings. Is that clear? It wasn't my fault, you know. Uh, that's no concern to me. Your actions last night were totally out of line. Well, what was I supposed to do? Just let Wallach beat uh, me up? I should have fired both of you. Look, while I was a dead weight anyway, we won't miss him. The only reason you're still here is that I couldn't deprive the Rexford of its entire staff of orderlies. Look, why don't we just stop making a big deal out of it? It's over and done with. All right, consider yourself warned. If there's a repetition of last night, you'll be joining Wally Bascom on the unemployment line. Come on, Doc. You wouldn't want to give old Sharky the sack. Oh, try me. It just wouldn't be a good idea. Oh, so you think you can blackmail me, is that it? Let's face it, Doc, you need me around here. You've got all these patients. And nobody takes care of the patients like me. I know a lot about them. Meaning you know about Mr. Kincaid? Gideon, Doc, you and me, we can use his room. You are name. never to call him anything but Mr. Kincaid. <sighs> sure, I get it. I've been cooperating, haven't I? I've been, I've been doing everything you told me to do. I've even been taking care of Mrs. Carr. If it wasn't for you, there wouldn't be any Mrs. Carr. Well, if you leave it to me, there won't be. That's enough! I'll tell you something, Doc. Why don't we stop talking about firing me and start talking about giving me a raise? Mr. Johnson is here. Well, that was fast. Hey, you think this uh, guy can fill Wally's shoes, Doc? My name is Dr. Bryson. Oh, Doctor. Doctor. Oh, sorry. Uh, well, we're ready to see him now, Mrs. Bryson. We are ready to see him? Well, I'm going to have to work with the guy, right? I want to see if we can get along. Get back to your work, Sharky. <sighs> right, Doc. Doctor. Sorry. Doctor. Come in, Mr. Johnson. I'm Dr. Kenneth Bryson. This is Mrs. Bryson, uh, our head nurse. Uh, Richard T. Johnson. Yeah, yeah. Sit down, Mr. Johnson. <clears throat> so, what do they call you? Uh, Richie, Richie Johnson. Well, uh, Richie, thank you for coming out here so promptly. Yeah, it's okay. I, I heard it was urgent. Oh, it is. This is a small hospital. We have only two orderlies. So, when we lose one, that reduces the staff by 50%. <laughs> Uh, you have a letter, I believe. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, it's, it's a little crumpled up. I, I guess I got nervous. Relax, Richie. We won't bite. Yeah, well, you know, I, I heard things about here. I, I, I heard maybe this isn't the kind of place that I'm going to be used to. It. This is a private hospital. Very private. Which is why discretion is a very important quality in those we employ. But I'm sure that was explained to you. Oh, yeah, 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 it was. What do you want? Oh, I thought I left my smokes in here. No, you did not. Now, please leave. Well, what do you know?
So you're at City Hospital only eight months, is that correct? Uh, yeah. And at Glenville General for only three months prior to that? Yeah, yeah, that, that's right. There was a little trouble at Glenville, wasn't there? Nothing serious. You were accused of stealing medications. Th that ain't true. Ah, you were framed. It was a mistake, that's all. Well, obviously it's not on your record, since you had no difficulty finding another connection. How long were you in prison, Richie? Me? Your name is Richie, isn't it? Well, yeah. Oh, that's all right, Richie. We know all about your prison record. Our friend at City told us about it, including the fact that you uh, concealed that information from the authorities at the hospital. But I am sure that you were framed for that, too. Uh, it, it was another uh, bigger mistake. Look, I swear to both of you, I'm clean now. I, I, I'm an entirely different person from the one I was then. Well, you won't find many temptations to steal here, Richie, since we deal in surgical medicine only. None of it really major. You do know what we do here. Oh, yeah. Uh, facelifts, stuff like that. <laughs> yes. Yes, facelifts and stuff like that. You won't find your duties here very hard, Richie. But we uh, will require you to work somewhat longer hours, perhaps. You'll be allowed time off uh, every other evening and an hour every day. You will alternate weekends with Sharky or other orderly. Uh, that's, that's good. Okay, good. And you know, your wages will be considerably higher than what you were receiving. And of course, you'll have room and board. Yeah, yeah, look, it all sounds fine to me. Now, listen to me, Richie. I can't emphasize this too much. This job demands discretion. When you leave this hospital, you will talk to no one about what goes on here. Is that clear? Uh, yeah, yeah, but look, I... I... What, there is a very good reason for that, Richie. You see, most of our patients are well-known figures in business and the arts, and some of them, celebrities, would much rather not be bothered by the press and by their fans. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah, but, you know, I, I, I'm a little worried. I, like I said, I, I'm only used to a, a general kind of hospital. I, I, I'm scared that maybe I, I'm not going to know how to act around these people, you know. I can assure you, Richie, they are just like everyone else. In fact, most of them are quite ordinary. Yeah, I, I, got, I got an idea. Maybe I, I should just walk around the hospital a little bit, you know, say hello to the patients just to see if uh, I, I'm going to fit in, uh, whether I decide yes or no. I thought you had decided. Why else are you here? We were told that you could start at once. Now, if that is true, you will be dealing with the patients soon enough. Well, is it yes or no? If it's yes, I want you in uniform immediately. Yes, yes, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, good. All right, Mrs. Bryson, we'll show you to the locker room. Come with me, Richie. My, you are a tall one, aren't you? <laughs> I think our Mr. Johnson's going to do just fine. May not have the criminal background that Wally Bascom has, but I... I think he's dishonest enough to meet our, uh, standards. Please stop talking that way. You make us sound like mobsters. Well, he only serves mobsters, my dear. That's an entirely different thing, as you enjoy pointing out to me. We perform services for everyone, Kenneth, including charity cases. Now, do you think we could afford those cases if we didn't collect from other sources? Oh, please, Beth. Spare me the philosophic discourse. It bores me. Kenneth, you are the one who has set policy for this hospital and the choices we made abroad. Sometimes I wish we'd stayed abroad. This is our home. Well, we may have to leave our home sweet home before long. Oh, no. No, no, we are not leaving. Not if I have any say in the matter. If anyone goes, it's Mrs. Carr. Abroad? <laughs> Anywhere. <laughs> now, there's an idea. We'll buy Mrs. Carr a one-way ticket to uh, Timbuktu or uh, the uh, Australian bush country. Think she'd go willingly? The only place she would go willingly is to the police station. Oh, no way. Sharky wants more money. What? That's right. He wants an increase. 
He's no longer a mere employee, you realize. He's uh, now uh, elevated himself to the rank of co-conspirator. What? Do you think he means to make trouble? <laughs> Sharky? <laughs> no, he's only too happy to be of assistance. Now he's uh, fallen on something bigger than he thought, and now he wants a share of the spoils. Well, maybe he wouldn't be such a bad partner after all. <laughs> the man has no brains. He also has no scruples. Excuse me, I think I will go and see how our friend Richie is getting along. In April, I promise I'll be careful. Oh, I, I can't. Because I've got to play this thing out for another couple of hours. Maybe I can walk around here, get a tour of the place, then look in on room 210 to that mysterious bandaged woman. Uh, look, I gotta go, someone's coming. changed um i had to make a quick phone call well that's not a very good way to start a new job richie yeah i'm, I'm sorry uh, i'll get dressed right away um uh, look you'll have to excuse me i am a nurse yeah but i ain't a patient all right be dressed when i get back Yes, I was. Sharky. Matt Sharky. Good to know you, Matt. No, no, no. Just Sharky. Richie. Richie Johnson. Oh, welcome aboard, Richie. Thanks. I'll tell you one thing. You found no bucket of sweet cream here. Yeah, yeah. I hear it's a pretty good deal. Hey, the suit fits you. Me, I have to have mine uh, tailored. I don't like to go around looking like a slob, if you know what I mean. They've got all these rich, fancy patients here. A guy's got to look his best. Yeah, uh, I can see your point. You know, sometimes before I hit the town, I don't even bother changing. It cuts down on your time. Besides, some of the chicks think I'm a doctor. Oh, uh, what about the patients? I mean, uh, how many patients you got here? Uh, you can count them on one hand. Take your pick. That's one of the good things about working at the Rexford. They work you long, but they don't work you to death. Yeah, that's, um, that's, that's good. Uh, what about women? I mean, uh, how many women patients you got here? Half and half. Uh, I, I was just asking because I, I figured, you know, maybe more women would come to a place like this than uh, men. Don't kid yourself. Men are just as vain. Yeah, uh, look, maybe one of these days you, you walk me around here, okay? Um, show me what's going on so the patients, you know, they, they get to know me. Yeah. Sure thing, Richie. I'll show you the ropes. But one thing I don't want you to forget. And what's that? I'm the top dog here. Yeah, you got it. That's it, what? I'll catch you later. What's the matter? You, mean you got a problem? No. You know, when I saw you in Bryson's office, I thought you looked familiar. Uh, got that kind of face, you know? No, no, that's not it at all. I've seen you before. And I know where. No, no way. You couldn't have seen me. It was in Monticello, wasn't it? It was in a hospital. Monticello General, the joint where I used to work. Sharky, you're right. I slipped my mind for a second. I did work at Monticello General for, you know, a little while. I knew it. 
I knew what names going into and out of my head, but I never forget a face. Yeah, that looks like you and I got a lot of stuff in common. Yeah, huh? I'm only too happy to forget I ever did time in Monticello General. Six months was plenty. Yeah, I didn't last too long myself. Well, they seem to have a hard time hanging on to good help. Yeah, it's no wonder. I mean, I looked at a couple of those paychecks they gave me. I said, for all that work I'm doing, that's it, man. I quit. There was a rumor going around that Emmanuel Scrooge was doing the payroll. Uh, I don't think I ever met him. Mm. But I figure from, from what I, I'm, I'm told I'm going to make here, the money I'm being paid is well worth it. Yeah. Well, what shift did you work at the general? Um, all, all of them. You know, they rotated me around. Well, I don't remember seeing you at the Hathaway Pavilion. Uh, is that where you worked? Oh, uh, yeah. Whew. Well, they, uh, they, they put me there once or twice. I said, look, Richie Johnson ain't working with any mental cases, period. That's it, man. Smart man. And then they put me in uh, internal medicine. Oh, yeah? I heard that was a pretty good service. I can't believe anything you read, you know. The grass is always greener, right? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Hey, uh, how about you, man? Uh, how'd you get this job? Connections, what else? A buddy of mine, Wally Bascom, he told me about it. That's the guy that got canned, huh? Yeah, he, uh... Stepped out of line the other night. Ah, uh, well then maybe I better be careful myself, huh? <laughs> While he's lost, it's your game. Hey, what about the, the patients? What about them? I, I'm new, you know, and I figured uh, nobody told me the kind of person I'm supposed to be orderly for. First day on the job, he wants to make a good impression. <laughs> All right, come on, I'll introduce you. I better get out of here and let you get back to work. Thanks for the info, Cliff. Yeah. Sorry I can't show you out. I'm sure Draper will be back at the old stand tomorrow. I hope so. Well, you can call him then. Well, hopefully my sister will give me a call and let me know what's going on. At least I know she's safe and sound. Talk to me, honey. I'm drowning in a morass of torts. I mean, she is. Oh, no, 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 no. You better send her in. I don't want any trouble. Uh, look, Doc, you better stick around. I mean, Egypt. This could be a very interesting consultation. Oh. Come in, Mrs. Michaels. Thank you for seeing me, Mr. Nelson. Dr. Cavanaugh, I didn't know you were here. Hello, Emily. I hope you're not having any legal problems, malpractice suits or whatever. No, I'm not here on business. Okay. Uh, what can I do for you, Mrs. Michaels? We're running a special this week on paternity law, if you're interested. Cliff. Actually, I came here to see Draper. Oh, he's not in. Yes, I know that. Your secretary told me. I just wondered if he'd be long and I could wait in the reception area. Actually, Draper's out of town now. Really? W where is he? Well, let's just say if he calls in, I'll uh, give him your message. I'd like to know where he is. I'm not uh, free to divulge that information at this time. I'm sorry. Well, perhaps you'd be uh, more cooperative, I'm doctor. afraid I can't help you either, Emily. <laughs> Something is going on here, and I'd like to know what it is. Well, when Draper comes back, I'll have him call you, all right? You know, don't you? You, you both do. Look, I'm very busy, as you can see, Miss... You know, this is very strange. First, I can't locate April. Everybody I talk to in the building hasn't seen her for days, and every time I talk to that silly housekeeper of hers, she gives Emily, me the same song so and dance. why are you so concerned about finding April? And now, all of a sudden, Draper is not available either. I see no need for the two of them to check in. <laughs> you, know? you know what I think? I, I think that there is a plot against me... Yes, that they've run away together, is that it? Emily, you're letting your imagination get the better of you. Yeah, you know, this whole separation was just a ruse to lull me into a sense of security. And now they've decided to, to, to move away and leave me alone with this oh, baby. Uh, calm down, that's not the case at all. And don't uh, lie to me, I know whose side you're on, I know whose Emily, side everybody is me. on. there is no conspiracy against you, I promise Emily, you, you. You hate me, everybody all hates right, me. Right, listen, if you must know, it looks like April and Draper have just gone off on a little trip for a couple of days, that's all. On trip. Yes. Well, well, then why wasn't I told? Well, don't you think that three would have been a crowd? I should say four. Yeah, that, uh, it was very wrong of, of Draper. Terribly, terribly wrong. Look, he's entitled to some time with his wife. You know, they are married. Yeah, but what if I need him? Listen, you're going to have to learn to depend on Draper less now. No, I, I want to know where they are. I insist well, upon Emily, seeing Draper. Emily, just like us, you're going to have to wait until he gets back. He has to learn that he cannot simply run away from me and this baby. Take it easy, Mrs. Michaels, please. Don't you tell me what to do. I just don't want you to have the baby right here in the office. Oh, Cliff. I am going to find them. You'll see. I don't know how, but I'm going to find them. So, 
how do you like the grand tour so far? <laughs> it's pretty fancy, man. Yeah, it sure beats the words of Monticello General, doesn't it? That's, uh, what's his name? Rexford, St. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you must have to have a lot of money in the bank to get this guy to work on your face. Either that or rob one. <laughs> <laughs> this place is pretty old, but it's got the latest in medical equipment, and uh, this is the VIP corridor. Every suite is furnished like a first-class hotel. I thought I heard voices out here. Uh, yeah, well, I'm sorry to disturb you, Mr. Kincaid, but I'm just showing our new orderly around. No, I've got something more important for you to do, Sharky. Yeah, yeah, sure thing, but uh, first let me introduce you to our new orderly. Uh, Mr. Kincaid, uh, Ricky Johnson. Uh, Richie. Richie yeah. Johnson. Richie Johnson, yeah. Mr. Need... Kincaid. Uh, listen, I want some cigars from that poor excuse for a tobacconist in town. Well, you just name the brand, it'll be on your nightstand in an hour. Now, you're gonna drive me into East Meadows. I want to look over the inventory myself. Oh, well, whatever you say, Mr. Kincaid. At the last box of cigars you got me most unsatisfactory. Well, well you've got to realize that they're only newsstands and where you can get those things, and you're not going to have a van is lying around there. Now, there must be something better available. We'll just have to find it. Yeah, we will. Uh, look, it's kind of chilly outside, so why don't you get on your overcoat and I'll pull the car around. I'll be ready in five minutes. Don't keep me waiting. No, sir. Gee. That guy is no threat to win the Mr. Nice Guy of the Year award around here. Yeah, well, he's a star patient around here. You look at him cross-eyed, you're on the first bus back to Monticello. Look, I hope the other patients in this joint are easier to get along with than this one. Well, actually, he's the sweetheart of the bunch. Well, what about the other patients? We don't have any other patients, Richie. What? There's no other patients. Two orderlies for one patient. What could be easier? Look, I gotta do what the man says. I'll catch you later. Uh, don't get lost. Yeah. We'll get back to normal now that we've hired that new orderly. What's normal to you, Doctor? You know what I mean. We have established a routine of sorts around here, even if you don't find it too uh, pleasant. Now, your blood pressure's fine. You're uh, holding up quite well, Mrs. Carr. Please. I really don't approve of what you're doing, Mr. Kincaid. It's much too soon after your surgery. Facial surgery shouldn't prevent me from being ambulatory, Dr. Featherstone. But just let me talk to Dr. Bryson before you go I out. I have made I... up my mind, and you are not going to stop me. God knows I'm paying you people enough. What is going on here? Oh, uh, it's nothing. It's just a, a little disagreement. What about? Well, Mr. Kincaid wants to drive into town. I am driving into town, and neither one of you are going to stop me. If your orderly won't drive me, I will drive myself. I am perfectly capable of it. It's all right. Dr. Featherstone, Dr. Bryson has already given his permission. But he's been getting medication. It is <laughs> all right, Dr. Featherstone. <sighs> very well, then. I'm very sorry about that, Mr. Gideon. Be careful. That old fool may be right outside the door. Always call me Kincaid. Yes, of course, you're right. I'm sorry. I should be more careful. But then, of course, so should you. Oh? So you have some objections, too, do you? Do you think I'll be recognized with these damn bandages? No, no, of course not. But all the same, it Listen, is a risk. Miss Nightingale, 
You and your husband are the last people in the world to talk about being careful. I don't know anything more careless than what you've done. Letting a reporter into this hospital. Keeping her on ice as if that'll prevent her from telling the truth. We are working on the problem, I assure you. You had better. Do you hear me? Perhaps it'll make you feel better, Mrs. Carr, if I tell you that I'm doing everything I can to make you more comfortable. What? Exactly. Well, for one thing, I'm going to see that you get better treatment. Although that's something I can do only with your cooperation. Will you stop bandaging me? No, we still can't afford to have you recognized. By whom, Doctor? You told me yourself that the only patient you have here is Ira Gideon. Now, that's no longer true. You see, we are admitting another patient. And we have that new orderly working here. And we do have visitors, medical supply salesmen. Oh, but anyway, I promise you, you will get better treatment. It all depends on your discretion, on your desire to leave this situation behind you. Oh, I want that. When does this happen? Soon, Mrs. Carr. Soon. Doctor, your new patient will be here in a few minutes? Yes, I know. Oh, I'll be along as soon as I finish bandaging Mrs. Carr. Oh, I can do that for you, Doctor. Your time is so much more valuable than mine. Soon, Mrs. Carr. Soon. I've been thinking it over, and, and this job it just ain't for me. Why, what's the matter with it? Isn't the pay good enough? No, no, no. The pay is fine, but there's something else. Is it the hours? I realize they're a little restrictive, but surely you have enough free time. No, no, no. It's, it's something else. It, it's, it's relocating. You know, most of my friends are in, in Monticello. I mean, my ties are there. And it all comes down. I, I, I just rather work there than here. I mean, that's all there is to it. Why did you apply for the job in the first place? Oh. Look, I, I'm sorry if I caused you any grief. Oh, you damn well have, young man. But I don't suppose there's anything I can do to change your mind. I knew you'd understand. Oh, uh, one thing. I want you to stay until tomorrow morning. It's Sharky's night off, and I don't want to leave the hospital understaffed. I can't do that. I mean, I mean it just ain't possible. Well, surely that's the least you can do. Yeah, you're right. It's the least I can do. Leave in the morning, Doc. speak to your husband, Mrs. Carr. I just can't help you. God knows I can't even help myself. Yes? I must talk to you, Bryson. Oh, it's a bit late, Mr. Gideon. Another time. No, I want to talk now. All right, what can I do for you? One thing you can do is stop calling me Gideon. With all these strangers wandering around here these days, that can be very dangerous. Well, you don't have to worry about that particular stranger. He's leaving in the morning. He doesn't like the place. I don't like it here either. And that's what I want to talk about. Well, can't we do it tomorrow morning? You've been putting things off long enough, Doctor. I think it's time you made up your mind. Well, about what? About your favorite patient. 
Mrs. Carr. Emily. Oh, Dr. Cavanaugh, I, I'm sorry for coming by so late, especially without calling, but I have to talk to you. What do you want? Well, may I come in? I promise I won't stay too long. All right. really ashamed of myself for the way I acted today in Cliff Nelson's office. You did cause a little bit of a scene, yeah. It was terribly wrong of me. And I'm sorry. I, I, I want you to know that. I'm glad you realized that your behavior wasn't exactly appropriate. No. I, uh, it wasn't right for me to, to cause such a scene and, well, to accuse you and, and Cliff of plotting against me. Hope you realize that was not the case. No, I got a little carried away. Well, you know how it is with pregnant women. They're moody and overly emotional, and especially when they're left alone in the world like I am. Listen, Emily, I understand what you're going through, and I, I sympathize with you. I really do. Some days it's just very difficult, Doctor. I can't tell you. I know, I know. But you would do yourself a favor if you try to think of what April and Draper are going through, too. Oh, but I do. I know that we've all been put under an incredible strain. But two people who love each other very much, and all they're trying to do is just find a way to get back together. And I'm making it very difficult for them, I know. Well, no one has gained anything by the way you've acted, including yourself. Draper and April belong together. I know that now. You mean that? I, I've been fighting a, a losing battle. April is the only woman that Draper could truly love. And can you accept that now? If I were sure that the Scots were reconciled, I would give them my blessing and just fade out of their lives quietly. I would allow you to start building a life for yourself, Emily. Yes, I know that. And that's why I need to know if it's true, what I was speculating about this afternoon. What do you mean? Well, have they reconciled? Well, they're off at some country inn someplace together. Then they are back together. Well, that would be the implication, wouldn't it? And I certainly hope it's true. I haven't heard from either one of them, so I can tell you for sure. I'm glad. I, I'm really very glad. It's the right resolution, Emily. It really is. Yes, yes, I, I agree with you. Listen, could you give me their number? I'd really like to call them. What for? <laughs> well, I want to tell them how happy I am for them and, and also let Draper know that I may require some child support. Of course, I won't ask for well, another thing. I really thing. think that kind of thing could wait until they return, don't you? Oh, no, I'd like to get it over I'll tell you what with. I will do. I will tell Draper to get in touch with you as soon as he gets back. Well, why I won't promise. you give me that well, number? Well, for one thing, I don't know the number myself, I don't Emily. believe you. Why is everybody keeping secrets from me? All right, I think you'd better leave now. I am sorry. I was really out of line. I understand your position. Um, well, may maybe you could ask Draper and April to give me a call. When yes, you come sure. Down. Yes, I will. Thank you. Good night. Good night. That's all right, Doctor. If you won't tell me where they are, I know someone who will. I wouldn't say that. For one thing, I earned a full day's pay. And for another, I found out that your mysteriously bandaged woman in room 210 wasn't Nancy. No, no, it was a car crash victim named Cora Allen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll do it. Being on your feet all day. But there's another reason I want you to stop work early tonight. Sharky. Because I know it's his night off, and you can bet your bottom dollar he'll be coming down to see you. No, no, I'm not jealous. I just want you to take a hot bath, jump right into bed. But please, before you do that, do me another favor. Make sure your door is locked. Bryson, you cannot let Mrs. Carr go. I can ill afford to have that woman confirm what the police already suspect, that I walked away from that drowning scene in San Francisco. I am fully aware of the importance of her silence. Even if I escape the country, 
The police will be on you like a shot, trying to find out what this new face you've given me looks like. I have no intention of coming under their scrutiny. Best laid plans. Well, even if I was questioned, I certainly wouldn't reveal the identity I've given you. Don't be so sure. I give you my word. Poor, naive Dr. Bryson. The police want to locate me very badly. They might make it well worth your while to turn state's evidence. Several years off your jail term may be just the incentive you require. It's not going to come to that. See that it doesn't, Doctor. You had better come up with a viable solution. And fast. people do it all day. Dig it? Looking real sharp, shark. Yeah, it's a brand new jacket. It's a British cut. The gentleman who sold it to me guaranteed that the chicks will come running to me when they see me in it. I thought they did that anyway. <laughs> I know it's hard to improve upon perfection, but why leave room for any doubt? Yep. Well, Sharky, something tells me that, uh, you're gonna do real well tonight. Yeah. Hey, look, Richie, I just want to tell you that I feel real bad about your leaving this job. I thought we could have some real good times together, you know? Watch yourself. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's the way it goes, Shark. I, I just don't understand it. You don't strike me as being a chump, but you're kissing a real good deal goodbye. Money and everything. I'm just disappointed. Especially because it's on account of some chick. Everybody around here knows that you're the real heartbreaker, right? Right. Well, look, haven't you ever met a girl that, girl, you would have done anything for? I mean, anything to even give up a sweet job like this? Truth? Sure. I mean, that's why I'm asking. Yeah, well, I, I did meet a girl that really got to me. It wasn't too long ago, either. Yeah? What happened? Yeah, well, uh, of all the chicks around, I had to fall for a mental case. A little spacey, huh? A lot of spacey, as in certifiable. Where'd you meet this one? I bet you think I met her at a singles bar, right? <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> On the job, back in Monticello. Patient? Yeah, at the Hathaway Pavilion. She was a real looker, too, but she had this sort of a, a, a nervous breakdown. I could have gone for her in a real way, but she just had so many problems. How far did you get, man? <laughs> Look, I'll send you my memoirs when no, they no, come, come out. Come on, I'm always, always hearing about guys like you, you know, fooling around with patients, and you guys never get caught. Right? You belong in that club? I'll tell you about my exploits some other time. No, no, right? Come on, please. Uh, it's a long night. I'm going to need a story. Tell me a story, please. Come on, this is my night off, Richie. What am I doing hanging around talking when I can be out doing, right? Right. I thought you would have handed in your resignation and been back here by now. Well, that was the original plan, I know. Well, but you're still out there. You're still on staff, and I'm confused. Well, well, wait, wait. Give me one more day, and I promise I'll be a former oh. employee. One more day? What has gotten into you? What, you? You like your new job as orderly so much you want to make it a new profession? Hardly. Draper, don't forget your sole intent for going out there was to find out who that bandaged woman in room 210 is, and you've already done that. But it wasn't Nancy. That's right. She's a legitimate patient who deserves to have a legitimate orderly looking after her. Never relax. There's more I can learn here. I can learn a lot more about Sharky and Emily. Did he mention her? Well, not by name, but he did mention this f mental patient that he was involved with, and I know it's she. Well, how did this happen? Oh, he know, Sharky. He likes to brag about his women. I just know I can get him to admit that he and Emily were lovers, and you know what that's going to mean to us. <sighs> Boy, do I. I pray for that. I can to wheedle the truth out of him. But I'm still worried. I mean, what if... What if they find out why you're really there? So what? They fire me. Big deal. No. No, I'm, I'm worried about Sharky. Draper, 
wonder if the guy's mean. Well, I'm worried about you, being down at that tavern all by yourself. I'll have you know, I made very good tips last night. Well, that's not what I mean. I, I don't like the idea of Sharky going down there every night to, to leer at you. Oh, are you jealous? No, I just want to know what happened. I know the guy took off from here last night with lust in his eyes. Hey, Richie, baby, how'd it go last night? Any uh, problem? Uh, I'll call you back in a minute. Hang on. Uh, no, Shark, uh, piece of cake, man. Hey, well, Bryson told me the good news. Welcome aboard once again. Oh, uh, thanks. Let's just wait and see how it goes, all right? Yeah. Yeah, well, what made you change your mind? You were dead set on beating it out of here. Uh, well, I thought over what you told me. You know, you were right. Smart man. You know, uh, women are easy to find. Oh, yeah, a dime a dozen. Yeah, but jobs like this aren't. Well, you made the right move, believe me. Yeah. Uh, hey, hey, Shark, uh, how'd you do last night, man? Ah, uh, things didn't work out too well. Oh, what happened? I went to pick up that incredible-looking chick I told you about. Uh, I, I had big plans, believe me. But as soon as I walk in the bar, Sid hits me with the news that the chick's come down with the flu. I ain't mean, win some, you lose some. Tough luck about you and June last night, huh? They think that she could have been in bed with me instead of some stupid virus. Better luck next time. Hey, you want to hear something even stupider? Mm -hmm. So the evening wouldn't be an entire loss, I started to hit on some chick who works out in the post office out in West Haven. I started to put a big move on her, you know? <laughs> her old man walks in, he practically knocks my teeth out. Not your night, huh? No, it was not my night. Now, tonight, I gotta stick around here and play nursemaid while you take your turn. Well, I sure hope I do better than you did last night. Hmm. Hey, Richie, uh, what's it worth to you to pull another long shift, huh? huh? Hey, man, I gotta make up for lost time. Uh, I'll give you, uh, 20 if you spot me tonight. <sighs> that, that's okay. Look, you keep your money. What a sweetheart. The man's gonna do it for nothing. I'm gonna name my first male kid after hey, you. Hey, no, wait a second. I didn't say I was gonna do anything. Uh, what I meant was, no deal. Oh, come on, be a pal, huh? Look, I need some time off myself, you know? 25, that's tops. Look, I don't want to cause any hard feelings between us, okay? So, no. It's just as well, I guess. You know, nights like this, bet you wish you were back at the Hathaway Pavilion with that female patient of yours? Yeah, well, I didn't mind working the night shift when she was around. And I bet when you were around, that woman was not lacking for any affection. <laughs> yeah, well, I like to keep the customers satisfied. You still think about her? You know something, Richie? I don't like to waste my time thinking about women when I'm not with them. Funny thing. Look, I gotta pretend like I'm doing some work. See you, buddy. seem to have dozed off. Well, I was simply resting my eyes. Oh, yes. It certainly is a lovely day, isn't it? Couldn't hope for an eye, sir. I was just over there by, by the fountain, and I spotted you and little Julia. Hello, darling. How are you, sweetheart? I hope you don't mind my joining you. Well, I don't think it's a good idea, actually. Why? What's the matter? Well, this is awkward for me. You know you're not welcome in the Scott residence, Mrs. Michaels. I know that there is a strain between April and me, but... That doesn't mean that we can't be friends, now, does it? No, I suppose not. And she didn't instruct you not to sit with me in the park, did she? Oh, no. But I wouldn't want to do anything to displease Mrs. Scott. You see, 
I like this job very much. Oh, you have nothing to worry about because I wasn't going to stay very long anyway. Actually, it's a, a stroke of luck my running into you today. It is? Uh-huh. See, I have to ask you a little favor. Really? Now, I know that uh, April is out of town at the moment, but it's very important for me to get in touch with her. Well, when Mrs. Scott um, calls, I'll, um, I'll tell her that you want to speak to her. I'm sure she'll call you. No, you don't understand. What I have to discuss with her can't wait. I don't know what more I can do. You could give me that number you have for her, the one that you gave Mr. Scott. I can't do that, Mrs. Michaels. Well, why not? Well, Mrs. Scott only wants to be contacted in emergencies. Well, this is an emergency. It's really urgent that I speak with her. But I've been instructed not to divulge that number. When April finds out what I have to tell her, she will thank you for helping me. There's no question about it. I'm very sorry. Mrs. Timmons. Good morning, Mrs. Michaels. Ah. All right, Mrs. Timmons. Whatever you say. Bye, Julia.